an exercise that we do in the workshop is um, we we do an exchange and a partnership. So if I were speaking to you, I would say, I forgive so and so for such and such, and you would just say back to me, thank you, and I set you free. And we just do this little exchange where there is a, a timer. And you just sit and whatever comes to you and whatever comes to you. And for some of those things, um, you're going to need to do that exercise many times. And for some of those things, you're just going to need to do them once. Mm -hmm. But one of the beautiful things, too, about forgiveness is um, we can just we can just work on it piece by piece, layer by layer. And when we are forgiving ourselves, you know, people always use that story about the onion, right? Peeling back the onion. And uh, I'd like to think about forgiving ourselves like a is like a rose opening up. So as we forgive ourselves, we learn to have more compassion for ourselves. We learn to um, just love ourselves more and be accepting of ourselves. And when we approve of ourselves, when we accept ourselves, when we love ourselves, everything else in our life works. That is so true. And that was a big realization for me during my second healing journey with breast cancer. You know, it, it was literally one morning, I felt like I heard this voice. I mean, I was crying. I was just, just did not feel good physically, emotionally. And and it's, it's like the, a voice from within said, quit being so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just an aha moment. You know, my whole life, type A personality, nose to the grindstone, had to be perfect, had to, you know, do it all, be it all. And like you mentioned, forgiving ourselves is really challenging, you know, because we're hard on ourselves. But then if we, you know, part of her work too is, seeing ourselves as children, as yes. that little girl, you know, who wasn't nurtured or who needs to be nurtured. And um, it's, it's so, I find her work is just, it's based on love and it's mm -hmm. a very peaceful and very calm way of, of healing and looking at, at your life. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the book, You Can Heal Your Life, I find is just timeless. Uh, it is as applicable today, uh, you know, I, I, as it was when it was written. Yeah. I have clients uh, all over the world, you know, in, in many different countries, and it rings as true to them as it rings true to you and I. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, like you said, based on love, based on self-love, based on loving others. And it's interesting you brought up criticism because Louise uh, loves to talk about how to love yourself more. And her number one thing is stop criticizing yourself, right? It's just stop all criticism. And, you know, sometimes that's easy to do. We can catch ourselves when we're talking and we're like, oh, right, caught myself mm -hmm. criticizing myself. Mm -hmm. But also remember in your thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. Just to remember in your thoughts to be loving and kind and gentle to yourself as well. And I'm glad that you brought up the inner child. We all have one. I don't care how big and tough somebody is, <laughs> how successful they are. It doesn't matter. We all have this beautiful inner child and, you know, she has our back and we have hers. And when we learn to communicate with all parts of ourselves that way, then we can be even more accepting. It's another way of opening up and accepting ourselves more. Beautiful. So let's talk about the mirror work. I know Louise yes. has a whole course on mirror work and she mentions it in the book. So just tell us a little bit about that and, and why it's so effective. Well, you know, it's really funny that you mentioned mirror work because when you were saying about self-criticism and about self-forgiveness, um, again, we don't have to make it hard, this mirror work thing. So I'm going to back it up a little bit. The idea with mirror work is you go to the mirror you look into your own eyes, you say, I love you. And uh, I'll tell you what happens in a lot of my um, workshops that I teach is that people will look into the mirror, they'll start fidgeting with their hair, they'll start fixing their makeup, they'll start looking around the room. <laughs> and it sounds like such a simple thing to make solid eye contact and say, I love you. I really, really love you. So what I suggest to people is, start with, I'm willing to love you. And if that's too hard, I'm willing to consider loving you. 
And just when we circle back to what you were talking about with criticism and, and forgiving ourselves, what if we just did that every day? What if we, you know, as we're brushing our teeth, getting ready for bed, just looked up, made eye contact and thought to ourselves or said to ourselves, hey, you did great today. You did the best you could. You handled whatever came your way. And um, those things that were challenging, it's okay. I forgive you. I love you. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. All right? What if we did that? Like, how gentle does that feel to even think about doing that? And in the mornings, again, you know, having that eye contact with yourself. Hey, today is going to be a great day. I'm going to be here for you today. I, you know, I'm going to love you and support you all day long. No matter what happens, we can handle it. We've got this. Wonderful. Now, if you were to give words of wisdom to women dealing with breast cancer, what would those words of wisdom be? Say that you are brave and incredible and strong. You are absolutely perfect, whole, and complete no matter what is going on for you, you are those things. You, no one can take that away from you. You are beautiful, perfect, whole, and complete. And my words of wisdom would be, no matter what is going on, just continue to love yourself. And the more you love yourself, the more compassion you have for yourself, yourself, the easier you'll get through the process just by having that kindness to yourself that you would give to somebody else going through that same situation, but turning it around and giving it to yourself. Wonderful. Now, one last thought about breast cancer specifically. So what, what does Louise, how, what uh, kind of a connection does Louise make with um, breast cancer and our emotions? Okay, so you cut out a little bit for me there, but I think what you're asking is, um, what does Louise say is the emotional attachment to breast cancer? Correct. So I don't, I don't have the book in front of me, but I do believe that she says it's resentment. Okay. Um, and um, it's just something to consider. And sometimes people will look at the probable causes in the back of Louise's book, You Can Heal Your Life. So let's say it's breast cancer or let's, let's say it's heartburn, sore back, whatever it is. I want you to know that those are probable causes. Those are not things that are making you wrong. You are not to blame for having breast cancer or a sore back or a heartburn, whatever it might be, but it's just something to think about. Am I carrying some resentment in my life? And in what ways can I release it? And whether or not it's to do with breast cancer, whether you're listening to this and breast cancer is not um, something that is happening in your life, how great would it be to think about letting go of resentment anyways? It's right. just such a great thing to do. Did I get it right? Is that what the book said? It's close, yeah. And she talks about uh, mothering and nurturing, um, refu refusal to nourish and uh, nurture ourselves, putting mm -hmm. everyone else first, over mothering, mm -hmm. over protection, overbearing attitudes. So, yeah, we see that women with breast cancer, you know, they're always doing everything for everybody else. And, you know, they put themselves last on the to do list. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've seen that pattern too. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, what a great opportunity now to shift that pattern and uh, to live out, you know, the rest of your lives, just knowing that it's okay to love and nourish other people, but it's also okay to put yourself first. Yes, 